We have the privilege of having Chris Elkins today from Guidestone. We're so glad for that. We've had a meeting talking about preparing for retirement, which has been a great time. And, and as we talk about this, if you have questions, just let me know. You can Twitter, do Twitter, call me, anything, and let me know uh, your question. But we wanted to ask Chris a few questions while we've got him here today. And uh, glad you're joining us today. Feel free to share this with some other friends that uh, might be helpful to them. So Chris, I wanted to ask you, first of all, as we've been talking about preparing for retirement, what do you think are some of the main keys to preparing for retirement? Well, <clears throat> I get asked almost every day, do I have enough? Or uh, am I invested correctly? Those kinds of things. Preparing for retirement is a huge, retirement is a huge shift. It's more than just a set of financial decisions. Uh, hopefully you go into retirement with some dreams and some plans and some goals, things that are gonna get you out of bed every day, uh, that kind of thing. But, but to get ready for retirement, one of the key factors that I find is that most of us don't have a goal. We don't realize, we don't, I haven't really got our arms around the idea, how much income do I need in retirement? Until you can answer that question, it's really hard to uh, answer the questions of do I have enough? So, so one of the things that most people have to do in getting ready for retirement is to come up with, this is how much monthly income I'm going to need. I'm going to need X amount. And once you know that figure, then we can start factoring in how much Social Security is going to pay, how big your retirement account needs to be to, to support you. And, and in general, uh, Time is the most powerful force in your retirement account. Uh, not the amount of money you're putting in, that is important, but the amount of time it's gonna be in the system. And so if you're a person like most of the people I talk to that got started later, a lot of us have to work longer in order to have adequate assets in order to retire. All right, well, you know, a lot of us as Americans are way behind and a lot of us in ministry are really way behind on our retirement savings. So should I just give up? Is there is there hope for me? What let's say that I'm that I'm fifty five years old and you know I just really haven't done much. What should I do? Is it do I give up? What do you what do I do? <laughs> well no, don't give up. Don't give up. The for sure. The uh, uh it's 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 difficult and first of all know that there's a lot of people in the same boat that you're in. It's uh, you, there's a lot of people who didn't take this seriously enough early enough or had life events that just simply kept them from 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 being able to accumulate much for retirement. What it's likely going to mean is that you're going to have to work longer. Um take care of your health because for many of us are going to have to work until age 70 anyway. There's a lot of advantages to waiting for your Social Security benefit uh, until that age, uh, doing a retirement accumulations to that age. If you're 55 years old, you can put as much as $23,000 a year into uh, a, re a qualified retirement plan. Now, many of us can't put that much in, but I want you to know that it is possible to put in fairly large sums of money, uh, particularly in your latter years where you might have more flexibility, the kids are grown, maybe the house is paid off, those kinds of things that would allow you to make larger contributions. But again, with the issue of time and this whole factor of compounding that really drives the growth of a retirement account, the longer the money is in the system, in the retirement plan, the more likely it is that you're going to have uh, enough assets. Now, all of us are going to look at retirement somewhere along the line and say, okay, this is how much I need. Social Security is going to take care of this amount. Uh, uh, my retirement plan can take care of this amount. But, uh, you know, and another factor that just jumped in my mind is how long are you going to live in retirement? Retirement. That's, you know, some of us are going to live 20, 30 years into retirement. So, so until I know what my monthly income needs are going to be and where those are going to come from, some of us are gonna to learn to do little jobs uh, like welcome to Walmart or uh, do you want fries with that or something like that. There's nothing shameful or disgraceful about that at all. It's just that necessity will drive uh, hope the, the um, opportunities maybe to have some form of income because it's gonna either come from Social Security, a retirement plan, a windfall of some sort, or continued employments. You know, in ministry, we're kind of different sort of people. And sometimes I hear from people and they'll say, I am called to ministry. I feel that that's a lifetime. So should I really re prepare for retirement? It, 
I'm not going to retire. Right. So what would you say to me? Well, I talk to ministers every day, Lee, that say this. And, uh, and we, at Guidestone, we're not expecting you to retire from God's call on your life. But there just simply comes a point in life, and generally it's driven by age, where being someone's employee doesn't make as much sense for them anymore or for us anymore. Our energy levels will change. Our health levels will drive the situation. Maybe the condition of our spouse or other family members will require us to be focused elsewhere. Elsewhere, and there comes a point that, you know, perhaps not being someone's employee is the right decision. It doesn't mean you stop your ministry. For many of folks who got started into retirement savings early uh, and have adequate sums of money in a retirement account, they're going to find that the freest years of their ministry will be their retirement years. They can go and do anything God has called them to do because they uh, don't require remuneration from anybody. So, so look at your retirement fund as a source of self-funded ministry. You're not God's call on your life is not going to go away just because you've turned a certain age, but how it's carried out, how it's funded, what pace you do it, those kinds of things will likely change as you get older. You know, I wanted us to think about a couple of things. We've been talking about the church retirement plan, and, uh, and that's what we're all about. But I hear from some ministers sometimes, and they think, well, why don't I just do an IRA? Why don't I get an IRA with somebody else? What difference does it make? What are what would be some advantages of the church retirement plan? Well, the church retirement plan is a retirement plan that's available to all Southern Baptist churches and to uh, Southern Baptist associations. It's a 403B tax-deferred retirement savings plan. Now, again, you can go get a traditional IRA for this tax deferment uh, portion of it, but there are several factors that a 403B uh, allows a minister. If the IRS sees you as a minister, you're receiving a housing allowance as part of your income, and thus the IRS sees you as a minister. 403B has a, some huge advantages to you. Number one is, if you're a minister for tax purposes, you're paying 15.3% to Social Security as a seeker. Tax. The only place that I know that you don't pay that SICA tax is a contribution to your 403B retirement plan, the church retirement plan. If you put money into an IRA, you will have to pay the self-employment tax on that money. So, so there's a huge tax advantage to the 403B. Uh, as well, the Alabama uh, Convention offers some added benefits in the 403B plan. In an IRA, you're just going to have an IRA. <clears throat> but with the, uh, with the church retirement plan, the Alabama Alabama Convention is going to uh, add a, a matching contribution. If you're putting in at least 105 a month, they're going to add another $17.50. Uh, if you're making regular monthly contributions, they're going to add two insurance products, a disability uh, product as well as something called survivor protection, like life insurance, that protects your family. So not only are you making a contribution of, around your of, uh, future retirement, you're taking care of the present. You're taking care of, of some insurance needs at no cost. It just requires participation uh, in the plan. Someday when you get to retirement and start drawing money out of the plan, then uh, one of the great advantages Guidestone will bring over an IRA, two things come to my mind really quickly, is if you're still working at age 70 and don't want to start drawing money out of your retirement plan because you're going to work longer, you'll have to draw it out of an IRA. There's something called a re required minimum distribution that comes at age 70 and a half. So if, you're, if you've got money in your 403B plan at Guidestone, we'll offer you the opportunity to delay the required minimum distribution. As long as you're still serving the church uh, and still employed by them, you will have the opportunity to delay. You won't get that benefit uh, uh, in, in, in an IRA. And one other thing about a distribution from your Guidestone account is you could call up to 100% of it as housing allowance, as long as you're operating under the housing allowance rules, you can call 100% of it housing allowance. So with the tax benefits, the added extra features the convention brings, the housing allowance possibilities uh, in retirement, um, there's just no way that an IRA can beat the features of what's available to you in the uh, church retirement plan. All right, thanks Chris. You know, over the last few days and, and a couple of weeks, it's been all over the news that uh, retirement money or savings, mutual funds, those things are down right now. And, and in the mutual fund world, those things are down more than 10% right now. Uh, gosh, I have already lost money once before. I sure do hate to lose money in my account. Man, it makes me upset. So what would you say to me? I, I just want to pull it out and put it under the mattress. 
Uh, what would you tell me to do right now? Well, first of all, I can't be your investment advisor, but let me give some a few little uh, ideas going on here. When you're investing in a 403b retirement plan, you're not actually stacking up dollars. You're stacking up shares in mutual funds. You have selected a or several different funds that you want to invest in uh, for retirement. So when you look at the dollar figure of your account, um, a lot of people see it as a savings account at the bank, and so they've lost 10%, like you were mentioning, really of value in recent weeks. But the issue here is this, you don't have dollars in your, uh, in your retirement account, you have shares in mutual funds. And in the last few weeks where we've had seen a decline in the values, you didn't lose any shares, that's what you're accumulating, but if you had to sell them today, they would sell for about 10% less than they would have maybe a few weeks ago. But you're not selling them now, unless you move them, you're not selling them. So, so actually downturns in the market, I mean, you've got to think of yourself as a buyer. You're buying shares. Now, do you want to pay high prices for these shares or do you want to pay low prices for these shares? Most of us would rather buy the shares as inexpensively as possible and then watch them grow over time. So is a downturn a bad thing for you or a good thing for you? If you're the buyer in the system, then it's a good thing. These, these, this downturn uh, is a good thing. When you look at the dollar value of your account, that's a seller's perspective of your account. Look at the number of shares you bought last month compared to the previous month. You're buying more with the same amount of money. The name of the game, build a mountain of shares. Someday when you get to be my age and are approaching retirement, then you gotta start thinking like a seller. And sellers like high prices. And so we, we, we need to make some shifts in how we invest as we get older. But the younger you are, uh, the more time you have to ride out these downturns. There's been 15 major downturns of the stock market since the Great Depression, followed by 15 major upturns. So it's usually just an issue of time. And if we don't shoot ourselves in the foot when the market's down, then actually these downturns will serve many of you very, very well. Oh, thanks, Chris. I hadn't thought about it that way. Well, one thing is an audience today might include some younger ministers. What would you say to a younger minister right now? Okay. I wish someone would have taken me when I was about 28 years old and shaken me yeah. until I got started. Um, now, I actually did get started, but I made some foolish little mistakes when I was first getting started because every time I went from church X to church Y in my church service years, I would cash out the retirement money. Uh, to this day, I have not, I can't remember a single thing I bought with that money. But it would be hugely valuable in my retirement plan right now. The money that you put aside in a retirement plan before you're age 35 uh, can likely rival all you'll put in after age 35. Time, let me say it again, time is the most valuable uh, uh, force in a retirement plan. Albert Einstein called compounding returns the most powerful force on the planet. It's when you're, you know, you make an investment, it has growth. And next year, that investment has more growth, but the growth has growth. And you just see this mushrooming effect that time brings into ultimately one of these plans. And so, so if I was a young minister, and my son is, and I harass him about all this all the time, I know you've got a lot of pressures and children are coming and you're buying houses and those kinds of things. But if you will start early and before age 30 with a with a 10 percent contribution and never back off that amount of contribution when you're my age someday you're going to have some wonderful opportunities start early i know it feels like retirement will never come but i promise you, uh, th you these days will sneak up on you a whole lot faster than you ever expect them to wow well, hadn't thought about it that way chris thank you so much for being with us thank you for being with us this week good and uh, for being with us today sure if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call me at uh, the State Board of Missions. My number is 334-613-2241. That's my direct number right to my desk. And love to have you call me or email me at lwright at Thank you for joining us today.